Welcome to People Who Inspire. I'm your host, Mary Drelzak. With me today is Marissa Rega from Mount Pleasant, Pennsylvania. She's an educational consultant and mental health trainer. She's also a performer who uses her talents to make a difference, both at work and at play. If you're a parent or work with kids, especially those with special needs, stay tuned. Let's go meet Marissa. Welcome, Marissa. Hello. You're so How cool. are you? I am awesome, and more awesome because you're here. Well, it's a beautiful sunny day, and it's even brighter in here because you're here. Thank right? you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Marissa. You're welcome. And you as well. So we're going to talk about the work part of your life, but first I want to talk about the play part of your life. That's a good place to start. That's right. Yeah. So, so you're you're from Mount Pleasant. Did you grow up in Mount Pleasant? I actually did not. My husband is originally from Mount Pleasant. I was a Greensburg Salem girl. Okay. So I grew up in the Green South Greensburg area, Hufftown. Okay. Um, so um, and then we got married and and came to Mount Pleasant. Very good. So. And you come from a musical family. Yes. So tell absolutely. me about that. Music has been a very important part of my life growing up. I think from probably the age four, I was thrown on a stage with my father. Um, so my dad's side of the family were very musical. Um, generations of Tamboritsan, so that's like a cultural-based, um, I think like Lithuanian, Croatian music. Yeah. Um, and my dad played as a child and his father and his father. So just generational. Um, my father plays every instrument, stringed or horned or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. um, and so we just by ear, he, he learned music and then really instilled that in me. That's awesome. And um, I became a singer from there. But yeah. that's awesome. So when you so your parents were part of the Tamboritsans, that's pretty cool. Yeah. What did they actually do in the performance? So he played a lot of like banjo. He, my dad is by trade an accordion player. He is the man like the, the Hof, Hofbra House or whatever. Yes, I don't know if you've yes, seen that in Pittsburgh. Yes. He actually will go and play there. He oh. lives in Ohio now, but he'll make trips in with his little accordion. And awesome. uh, he wears the whole garb <laughs> and everything. It's a lot of fun. That's Sometimes awesome. he'll travel around like ethnic festivals with his accordion oh. and play. And he's just all about bringing joy through music. That is so awesome. that's where I get that. And when he brought you onto the stage, what did you do? And, and was that part of the Tamboritsans? No. So okay. he he has been in several bands through the years, like soft rock, hard rock, you name it. So I was a little rocker at, at a young age. Perfect. I learned all the old classic rock songs, um, old time rock and roll. He'd have me up there with a tambourine, shaking it on stage, <laughs> um, doing my little harmonies. And I just learned. It was just a part of me. It was like talking. Like yeah, music was it. That's awesome. So, yeah. so that now you are musical. Yes. You are gifted. You're a well, singer you. and yeah, a performer. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's also talk about your your family, your husband, your children. Tell us a little bit about them, and do they have this gift too? So thankfully, um, God did something right because He matched me with a musician, right? Mm -hmm. um, so my husband's a drummer, and he has just an ear for music. He played all his life as mm -hmm. well. Um, so don't hold up again. So he's a drummer. <laughs> I know good. some people don't believe that they're drums. musicians too, yeah. but no, um, he yeah. has an ear for it. And just as you know, as soon as we got married, we knew when we had kids they would do something musically. Yes. So of course my son was first, he's 20 now, and he, Logan, he was born first, and he just gravitated toward the drums. He wanted to bang on pots through the kitchen <laughs> and be like his daddy. Mm -hmm. um, but we had a deal that he had to learn music notation and notes mm -hmm. and all that good stuff. So he learned piano. Um, at, at what age? When did you uh, he was five. Five, okay. Yeah, Very usually good. school age is when you want to push like formal instruction. Okay. But um, so yeah, so he learned piano and then we said, okay, here's your first little drum set. And he yes. had the little play drums Aww. and he Aww. just took off. That's but awesome. yeah, so he he's actually a drummer. He's forming his own little band That's as a young adult now. And That's awesome. it's rock you, and loud of course. all the time <laughs> at my house. <laughs> but that's great. But it's great. I wouldn't trade it for anything. <laughs> Um, my daughter, who is 18, mm -hmm. she actually 11 days ago left for the military. So yes. she's actually at Navy boot camp right now, wow. pursuing some some other passions of hers. But she's a musician as well. Wow. And she started off with, gosh, uh, trumpet, saxophone. Then she taught herself ukulele and guitar. Wow. And then she ended up on the drums in the marching band. Wow. So she plays a lot of different instruments. and. Yes. 
And then my baby came along, mm -hmm. a little shock and surprise to the family, but she's mm -hmm. now just turned 13. She's a beautiful girl mm -hmm. and she's a singer and she actually mm -hmm. plays um, trumpet and piano a little bit. So That's awesome. Yeah. So that was great. So that we won't, yes. once they're born, they're, they're in into... They don't have a choice. They don't have a choice. <laughs> And it helps a lot that they no. have the genes. It helps that they, out, they love it yeah. as well. And it's something that, you know, even if they never do anything with it professionally, we always yes. tell them this is something you'll have your whole life. Exactly. And it's a great outlet for mental health. And I know we'll talk about that yeah, later. But for sure, um, it's something, you know, I didn't really pursue it in a community setting for mm -hmm. years. I kind of was raising my children and doing that thing. As a child, I was very involved, high school, very involved. But I took a long hiatus from music, performing. And at some point, I just realized I really missed it. Mm. So thankfully, yeah. my youngest one, we can talk about that in a minute, yeah. but we, we share some of the same That's awesome. Some things interest. you do together. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We're, we're definitely going to talk about that. And when you, when you think about your children, three children, are they, are they all, they all have something in common. They're all musical yes. and they can do this. Are there things about them that are so different about, about each other? Oh, Yes, Mary. That's, that's how kids go. <laughs> they, it's so funny because my husband and I talk about this. You raise them pretty much the same in the same environment with the same types of expectations, but they are so different mm -hmm. um, in all in good ways. You know, mm -hmm. we always say my youngest, Emma, she's feisty. Mm -hmm. she, we call it passion Mm -hmm. in our house. <laughs> and um, she, you know, a lot of times we say if she was first born, she could be an only child <laughs> <laughs> because she's a lot. <laughs> but it's great. And so we get to like point her into the things, her strengths that she is good at. And so we know she likes to talk a lot. She's loud. She's yes. musical, all these things. Yes. Musical theater is a great oh. avenue for yeah. her. So plugged her into that. So you kind of just pay attention to their strengths. Yes. Yes. And roll with that, that's, right? That's awesome. And Which there's really no mistakes. No, there are You just aren't. learn from. And yeah. you, do you find that you are a different parent to each child? Or you parent differently to each child? That is a very, yeah, I love how you said that. I do, I am, I, I'm not a different parent, but I parent each child mm -hmm. differently. I love how you said mm -hmm. that. Um, based on needs. Mm. Right. You know, right. my son, he, he, teachers would often describe him as an old man trapped in a child's body. Mm -hmm. He's very gentle. Mm -hmm and just sweet and quiet, yeah. um, where I told you about my last right. one, she is right. not that. Right, exactly. <laughs> so he has definitely, he needs it more drawn out of him. Yeah. Some of those times, like, okay, Logie, you got to call your boss and request for, and use a little bit more encouragement mm -hmm. with him. Mm -hmm. um, and my middle one, she's, she's strong. Right. She is very strong, hence the military choice. But right. she's strong-willed. Mm -hmm. But we have used that for good. That's good. And really found things and pointed her like an arrow in in that direction. That's really good. So. And I love how that how you were finding the gifts. You find what they are and, and you and you encourage that and you help guide that. You know. Let's go back to, to the to the to the youngest. Yeah. And and you perform together. Yeah. Okay. So that was by accident, okay. uh, kinda. So again, I found out that she really, she really has a beautiful voice. Mm -hmm. And from a young age, I realized like she was just singing in the car. Like, I think I actually remember the song. It's Let's Hear It For The Boy by mm -hmm. the 80s song. Let's sure, Hear It For The Boy. Sure. And I was listening to her in this little body, this four-year-old body. I'm like, she can really sing. Wow. And I just started singing with her just at home in the mm -hmm. kitchen or whatever. And she picked up harmony like that. Mm. And so this little five, five-year-old girl walking around singing <laughs> harmony with mom, like, okay, let's see what we can get into. Mm -hmm. So shortly after that, they were doing, they advertised um, Annie mm. at the Geyer Theater in Scottsdale. Right. And so she's like, mommy, mommy, please. And it was her favorite movie of all time. She watched Annie mm. on repeat. So I'm like, okay, let's go see what this is all about. And having, you know, not a helicopter mom, but a little protective of my baby. Sure. I said, okay, I think I'm going to just like audition with you for a background role, maybe a maid, something in the background mm -hmm. that I can just be at rehearsals with you because I didn't really know anyone there at that point. Mm -hmm. So we both auditioned and um, it was just a fun not knowing anyone or anything mm -hmm. about the theater. She ended up getting little Molly, the orphan Aww. Molly, the little one. Aww. And I... Got a featured role as uh, Grace Farrell, like oh. Daddy Warbuck's secretary. That's <laughs> awesome. It That's wasn't awesome. what I was expecting, That's but it awesome. was so 
wonderful yeah. sharing the stage with her right. and that just built and we've done, we've done several shows together that's so, so amazing that yeah. is so amazing <laughs> all right well very good well let's talk a little bit about your educational background and even in your current role what do you do tell us about, about so you. i am an educator by yeah. nature um I've been in the field for, gosh, this is my, what is the year, 24, 22 years. Wow. Um, and I work for, if I'm allowed to say, the Westmoreland Intermediate Unit. Sure. So we provide services to all of the school districts in Westmoreland County. Right. Um, and so there are 17 school districts and a bunch of private schools. Mm -hmm. My current role, I'll just work present backwards, is I'm a, a consultant. So I have the pleasure of teaching the teachers. Mm -hmm. So what do you teach that's them? really cool. Um, I specialize in the area of behavior and mental health. Good. Um, I dabble in some other areas, but those are really the two initiatives that I support them in. And I'm working with school administrators and even bus drivers. And I mean, you name it, I've worked with all kinds of school staff mm -hmm. um, because there's really a need, unfortunately, in this area, especially sure. after COVID. A lot of requests are coming out for mental health requests. What kind of things are you finding? Like, What are they asking for? What are you sharing with them? Yeah, a lot mm -hmm. around, currently the last couple of years, a lot around how to support anxious students. Mm -hmm. okay. um, students just seem to be, and this was before COVID as well, but it's definitely, there's more of it now. Right. Um, students just regulating their emotions mm -hmm. and being able to do all of that stuff in a school setting with all the pressures that come with school. Right. Um, and teachers really are struggling with teaching content because they can't get past those mm -hmm. barriers. I so I've done a lot around that. And actually the second biggest request has been around trauma mm -hmm. how and so? how trauma can impact learning. Okay. Um, a lot of kids all throughout the area have been negatively impacted by some kind of traumatic event, whether mm -hmm. it's COVID related. Mm -hmm. A lot of times parents have lost jobs or, mm -hmm. you know, major incidents has, have happened through mm -hmm. COVID. Mm -hmm. Or it could be like a divorce or something of that nature, mm -hmm. something within the family unit that really caused a trauma for that child. Right. And I, I'm a trauma certified practitioner. So um, I do have a lot of background in research and really understand a lot about trauma and teachers are often quite shocked and pleasantly shocked mm -hmm. knowing that, Hey, I can do something for mm -hmm. this child. Right. I don't have to just say, Oh, the poor thing. Right. I can actually do something and change my practices. That's not, well, that must help them feel so much more in control and supportive in, in the role. Absolutely. Yeah. It makes yeah. you feel like you can make a difference. Yes. And so, and that's yes. what I try to impart yeah. on teachers. But before that I was, I worked in school-based therapy a little bit. So I did some direct services with students and supported them in the realm of counseling. So okay. I did some school-based counseling. Um, and then before that, which sort of brought on my desire to be a counselor, I was a special educator. And I did that for 15 years. What what planted the seed for you to want to go into special education? Mm, that's a good question. So it actually goes back a very long way to actually when I was 12 years old. And I know not many people know what they want to do at such a young mm -hmm. age. But um, I met this beautiful human child who at that point was just just started kindergarten. And I met her mom because I was a middle school student and her mother worked at my middle school. She was the secretary okay. and I would often do deliveries and she just had a very special place in my life. And she said, do you babysit? And I said, I don't know. I've never babysat before. <laughs> and she sort of started telling me about her daughter and she wanted me to meet her. And um, her daughter had special needs. Mm -hmm. And so I really didn't understand what that meant. Mm -hmm. I, I never met anybody with special needs or differing needs. Um, and so when I met her, her name was Lindsay. Her name is Lindsay. Mm -hmm. She's still like, I'm mm -hmm. very proud of her. Mm -hmm. um, she was hearing impaired. And I say mm -hmm. was, and I'll explain that in a second. Um, she had a lot of behavioral needs because of her impairment. Mm -hmm. And so there was a lot of behaviors and different things. And, and Cindy, the secretary, her mother said to me, I would understand if you meet her and don't want to babysit her. A lot of people do that. Mm. And I said, well, let's just meet and have a little play date. Mm -hmm. And we did that and we clicked mm. and we, our relationship just grew and grew like sisters. Mm -hmm. And so I ended up watching her and babysitting her for many years wow. into her high school years. Even we were just very close. Mm -hmm. Um, and she is truly the reason why I started getting a special nudge in the area of special education. 
I just always knew I wanted to teach kids with special needs. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Was there um, an aha moment where there was no turning back? You knew that this this is what you this is what you're going to do. This is what you were meant to do. Wow. I think I had several aha moments, um, but I think when I actually was in the classroom mm -hmm. and just those moments I spent supporting kids who it's the relationships. Mm -hmm. And I think even now, time can't change that. Relationships are so important, mm -hmm. um, student teacher relationships. And I, as a 12 year old child, I remember a teacher mm -hmm. that I had that relationship with that even, you know, I was going through a situation with my family, a divorce and this type of thing. Mm -hmm. And this teacher really set me on a path that was like, oh, it's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. And a teacher did that. Yes. And so I wanted to be that for kids. Right. Um, and I think I had a lot of situations where um, I started realizing this is bigger than me. Mm -hmm. And um, teachers, adults can make a difference in the right. lives of kids. And so that sort of kind of morphed this creation of different avenues that I went professionally. So I became a counselor because I realized I need more training right. in supporting right. students' mental health. Right. Um, and so I got that, um, that training. I felt more equipped, but I kept in that classroom setting. Yes. I wanted to stay in schools. I just thought that was so, especially public schools, right. um, because I feel like sometimes we, I call it the invisible middle. Mm -hmm. The student that necessarily doesn't have the worst life, mm -hmm. They maybe don't, they're not the neediest kid. Mm -hmm. They come to school, they do all of the things. So I don't know yeah. if that there was an aha moment, but I started realizing those invisible middle kids, mm -hmm. at some point in their life, they're going to have a struggle. They're right. going to, you know, maybe it's a test they'll fail or a relationship that will go sour. Right. And I want them to know that they can turn to me and that I'm there to support them. That's right. That's great. That's wonderful. So that's, yeah, that's, that's really... kind of what projected me, propelled me into that's, what I do now. That's really good. In fact, you, so, so that is really, and that is truly your forte. It's special education, but it's mental health. In fact, you teach a mental health, um, youth mental health first aid. Right. What is that? What does yeah. that look like? Yeah. So it's actually a global program. It's okay. not just something in the area, but okay. um, I've been a trainer now for seven years for youth mental health first aid. Um, I first became trained because I just wanted more knowledge, mm -hmm. not realizing like this is a phenomenon. Mm -hmm. um, there's millions of people now in the U.S. trained. It's really taken off in this part of Pennsylvania as well mm -hmm. as the eastern part of the state. Um, but what it is, is it, you know about CPR. A lot of people know about CPR. It's the CPR of mental health. Mm -hmm. So it's learning strategies, it's learning a plan. We actually call it the LG Action Plan. So people can learn something that is concrete, that when they get in those trying situations with students, they say, oh, I know what to do. I feel more prepared. And it teaches, we go through scenarios, we go through a lot of the basis information, but they actually practice this. We pretend we're students and we go through some scenarios in class. And um, I know the, the feedback that I've gotten these past seven years has been very favorable. Mm -hmm. And not only teachers, but I've had parents in my class. I've had clergy, mm -hmm. um, pastors and priests and nuns and all kinds of different people who mm -hmm. take the class just to feel more prepared. That's right. And you teach it at the Westmoreland Intermediate Unit? Yes. And it's free. It is is currently yeah. free because okay. of cool. some grants. There you yeah. Go. If you live so, in Westmoreland County. And if you live in Westmoreland County, okay. it's free. But it's just a nominal fee yes. if you're, if you're yes. outside of the county. And what we currently do once a month. Mm -hmm. Um, so there's actually one July 11th okay. so that people are, and I know we're kind of like not on that timeline, but yeah. every month, if you check the IU website, yes, wiu 7org wiu 7org yeah. they can um, look and see if there's a class. That's great. Through the summer, it changes a little bit. That's but, great. So yeah. anybody, anybody who uh, works anybody, with kids. Anybody who supports, we always say adolescents. Yes. Um, and I do believe that they're really looking at that adolescent age and it's becoming lower and lower mm -hmm. because we are finding kids in fourth grade and third grade mm -hmm. in need of mental health support. Right. So they're actually working on an elementary Very good. version of the course. Okay, that's great. Yeah. Really responding to those needs. And so the people that come to this actually get certified in mental health first aid for youth. They do. And, and then yeah. they learn, they're basically learning how to, to respond. Um, in that moment when, when somebody's in need. I always, thank you for sharing. Yeah, yeah I, I always call it the in-between time. Yeah. They're the in-between time people. Right. Um, and unfortunately, in our county, West Maryland County, and probably in other counties, um, there is a, a really big need for mm -hmm. services. Mm -hmm. There's waiting lists mm -hmm. for services. And so what happens is 
a student's having maybe a crisis even, um, and they can't get in mm -hmm. to see a professional, a mental health professional. So teachers and parents and other people mm -hmm. tend to be those in-between supporters mm -hmm. that they're kind of providing that first aid mm -hmm. until someone can get professional help. Very good. And do you find that through all of this, that if there's a stigma of mental health, that it's breaking down, it's kind of, it's more, yeah. it's more common and open to be able to get that help that you need. Definitely. Right? more common than when you and I were younger. Mm -hmm. And I feel like there still is a stigma and a stigma is that negative connotation right mm -hmm. towards something. And so what I try to do, actually I get to talk to student groups about this as well. Mm -hmm. um, a lot, I didn't really talk about that earlier, but sometimes schools will ask me to come talk to kids, which mm -hmm. I love, because mm -hmm. that gets me back in the classroom. Mm -hmm. um, I got to talk to some sixth graders, seventh graders, eighth graders in the past three years about stigma and um, I don't know if you kind of imagine that they think that there's stigma around mental health, but they yeah. actually don't think that there's a lot. They actually, right. this generation of kids think that it's normal to talk about mental health right. and that's just part that's of like good. our health. Right. So that's a great switch that's mm -hmm. happening. But unfortunately the supporters who are the adults mm -hmm. still do view um, quite a stigma around mental health. So they're not talking about it quite as much as the kids mm -hmm. are. Um, which is the problem. So trainings like Youth Mental Health First Aid and some of the other professional developments that we're offering mm -hmm. really sort of aim to break down that exactly. view. Like this is just a part of your right. eight facets of health. We exactly. have, you know, financial health and physical health and all of these different things. Mental health is a part of it. Big, big, a big part of it. Yeah. So the kids are ready to talk. They want to they talk. Are. Not only the adults to be able to be there ready to talk to them. Absolutely. That's great. And just yeah. not only talk to them, but just sometimes listen. Mm -hmm. Yes. Sometimes it's just like we're doing, sharing airspace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to say too much. You don't have to be a mental health professional and have all the answers. Mm -hmm. It's just listening. Mm -hmm. And sometimes kids That's just great. need somebody to. That's great. Well, I know that you were, you were also, you were some, you're somebody to so many students. And I know that years ago you worked at Clareview, a school in Greensburg for students with special yes. needs. And kind of going back to that, finding that gift in the student and bringing it out. Can you share a little bit about a special thing you did at Clareview. Oh, wow, yeah. Um, so I was at Clareview School, which is our um, our featured school, county-based school that provides special ed services. Mm -hmm. um, everyone at Clareview has a special education plan. Mm -hmm. So um, above and beyond the regular classroom, right? There's a lot of needs there. Um, and we had classrooms that supported around autism, physical disabilities, all kinds of different areas. Mm -hmm. um, and when I was there, we had about over 100 students. Um, and I worked as a teacher initially. And then what I realized is I can sprinkle my love of music um, in the classroom and really get a lot of response from students. So a lot of times I'd be in a reading lesson and I would just start, you know, A-E-I-O-U and sing a song. And <laughs> I realized, oh, they're paying attention now. So I just realized the power of music, especially with students who have special needs. Um, and it's really what I call the universal language. Mm -hmm. So I might have a student in my class who does not have verbal speech, who will be able to hum along mm -hmm. a song with me or dance to the beat or play a tambourine. And so I would often sprinkle those things in my, in my classroom. And then I realized, I kind of want to do this like in a global uh, capacity at the school. So I applied for a grant and I really, I don't have a music degree, but it's just this passion of mine, right? And they allowed me, they were so kind, uh, Clarevy School, to allow me to start a music program. Wow. So through this grant, I called it Music in Motion. And every Friday I did my rounds in the school and I, I met every classroom and I brought my instruments in mm -hmm. and we sang songs mm -hmm. with the guitar and we had a talent show every year mm -hmm. and we even had a musical. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's and so, awesome. it, and it's really fun now because I will be out and about in the community in the Mount Pleasant area mm -hmm. and I'll see former students who are now, you know, older right, right, right. <laughs> and some of them have their own children and they're yes. grown and, yes. and they're like, Mrs. Rega, I remember music class with mm -hmm. you and I was able to form a choir. So we actually would, we had this beautiful choir oh, with robes wow. and we would go and sing at different events mm -hmm. in the community and graduations and, um, and those are the memories that people tell me that were so special to them. And, yes. and me as well. It was a very special memory. Absolutely. That universal language yes. and tapping into their gift. That's wonderful. And you're doing that now 
um, through stage right yes. in another way. Tell me a little bit about that. Yes. And so um, I haven't been involved since Clairview with um, direct music um, performance with, with kids with special needs. So this has kind of just been like eating away at me for some years now. Um, and when I started getting involved more and more with youth mental health first aid, I meet all kinds of people through that training. Mm -hmm. And just a few months ago, I was I had a training and one of the people in my training was a director of Stage Right Performing Arts uh, Theater. And they provide instruction and um, actually productions in, in the Greensburg, greater Greensburg area. And the director was in my class and just hearing a little bit about me. And she said, I have to talk to you about a program we're starting. And called me up and had this conversation and in walks to my life, Breaking Barriers. Um, and it is a workshop driven class for individuals with varying abilities and special needs. And so um, I just recently jumped into this role, mm -hmm. directing this class, and we mm -hmm. actually have our, our first show tomorrow. We mm -hmm. have a little performance tomorrow. So in this performance that yeah. you have, let's talk talk about that for a minute. And if I understand right, you wrote the songs for it? Well, so... <laughs> Yeah, and so and so what I realized, I had my own ideas of what mm -hmm. I wanted to do. And then of course, like things sort of morph. Mm -hmm. And this is where my education background sort of helped me because mm -hmm. I realized what I thought I was going to do wasn't exactly the needs mm -hmm. of the children in my group. And so because they were a little older and it wasn't fitting some of the music I was finding mm -hmm. and some some welcome songs and different things I wanted to do, I wrote I wrote one mm -hmm. and I had them help me with the choreography because one of my students, one of my girls is really into choreography mm -hmm. and dancing. And so my daughter, the feisty one, along with her friends are actually her background dancers tomorrow. Nice. And my student choreographed a little dance for them. Oh. And so um, just try again, pulling from their strengths and yeah. just using, and they, ha they each have a little song that they're singing and we're doing um, just a showcase for their parents to show them what we've been doing these last weeks. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. That is so awesome. Yeah, My I'm goodness. so excited. That, and we have camps and different things too. So, there. so if they want to find out more about yeah, break, they breaking can. barriers and camps and all the things that are offered Absolutely. Even through even what you're doing at yes. Stage Right, where should they go? They can go to stagerightgreensburg.com. That okay. is the website. Okay. Uh, the, probably the easiest place to get connected is on their Facebook page. Okay. though. So Stage Right, it's the bright green, um, lime green stage age picture that's their clip art uh, logo they can find it real easily through there that's awesome yeah well, thanks so much Absolutely. well marissa i would love it if you'd help us close out the show with with some words of wisdom what advice do you have for parents especially those with special needs that is an awesome question um i don't think that there is a magic formula um, and from from the parents that i have had the pleasure of working with and supporting these years mm -hmm. 20 some years mm -hmm. I think the answer is very simple. Take time for you because you can't help your child if you are depleted and if you are fatigued and there is something called compassion fatigue and it's a real thing. Um, we get burned out, even as teachers, we get burned out, as parents, we get burned out, especially for caring for a child with some significant needs. And um, so the best advice I would say is take time for you Self-care is a real thing. It's not just a pretty little thing that we throw out there, even if it's minutes in the shower, sing, listen to your favorite songs, whatever it is, do something that helps fill your bucket so then you can pour out and keep going for your kiddo. That's beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. Absolutely. Marissa, thank you so much. Thank you. Marissa, for being with us today. You are just such a treasure. Thank you, Mary. And we're so grateful for the having you. Thank you. you. Thanks right. for having me. All right. Thank you. Thanks so much for being with us.